You have to be outside in Congo. You have to be busy in Congo or Africa. You have to be busy. Because if you're not busy, nothing's going to happen for you here, you know? And in America, everything is there for you. The internet is there for you. The what, what is there? You can do work from home. Like they say, in America, in Europe, they have a written book. The book, it's a book, it's written. In Africa, the book is still empty. We need more Africans. We need more visionaries. We need more you know, innovators to make Africa great and better than it already is. Reconnect with Africa like I did. Yes, you can still go back to Europe. You can still go back to America, but come back to Africa, make it your home and grow stronger and grow the people of Africa stronger, inspire the people in Africa. Believe it, we have the nature, we have the potential and the opportunity is here. If, if you want to work hard, Africa, Africa is there for you. It will follow up. It feels so refreshed to be out here, man. Like, look at the view behind me. This is where I stayed last night. This is the pool right here. God damn it, like, and I don't think you guys are ready to see what I'm about to show you. This is the mighty Congo River right in front of me. And you got the mountains right in front of you. And that mountain that you're seeing, guess which country it is? That is Congo Brazzaville. And here is Congo Kinshasa. That's crazy. Just a river separating two countries. So what actually comes into your mind when you hear the word Congo? Because for me, I was scared. Trust me. I, I never thought Congo would be on my list anytime soon. You know, not because of um, they speak French, but because of the things that I had. Congo is a place of war. Congo. I think Kwame Nkrumah gave a speech in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. If I can remember the exact words from Kwame Nkrumah, he said that they always tell us that this country is better than the others. They always tell us that this country got diamond and you are stronger than the other. But one thing that they never tell us is that we should unite. And because when we unite, we become powerful. So imagine Congo Kinshasa and Congo Brazzaville put their resources together to form one country. Would you know how strong they will become? Imagine the entire continent decide to put their all resources together as one country instead of calling the, themselves a continent. Do you know how strong Africa will become because we can boast of the world mineral resources, the richest continent in the world. But we don't have leaders that have such vision. You see the view right there? That is the Congo River. And that is a mountain of what? Um, Congo Brazzaville. Right there you see people fishing. Can I tell you something? This view worth a million which makes it one of the most expensive things to ever achieve in life, man. Because you hardly get this kind of view anywhere in the world. But I'm right here. I've got my private residence behind me. Right in front of me, that is the mighty Congo River and the beautiful mountain of uh, Congo Brazzaville. It feels so good to be out here, man. Damn. I can't wait to learn more about this place. I'm just waiting for the guy to wake up and um, he's definitely gonna tell me how this place came into existence and all of that because I believe that even having fun, I still need to educate you about certain things. How does it feel like promoting Africa to the world, man? And how does it feel like? Is it easy or difficult? <laughs> Promoting Africa to the world. Why are you laughing? <laughs> hey, I'm just thinking of all, 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 all like all the places that, that you have gone and the challenges. It's not easy. Hey, it's not easy. Like if we're putting everything in camera, this will be something else. <laughs> and it's part of the challenges that we we go through. It's not easy, like traveling around Africa. Um, the way some Africans, our own people, treat us um, at the airports, at the immigration, um, even sometimes in the country, people just um, approach you, hey, why are you filming? But you see a white man 
just passing by with the camera filming they go to him hi hi which which when you think about it it it, it looks like you, can, know, you can't even imagine you can't understand can you believe that there was a day we wanted to see the congo river I mean, around the embassy's area, uh, and, uh, and the, guy said no. the guy said no to us. We can't go there. Then just we saw see, not to just to see, film. not to film. Yeah, just we just see. wanted to see. The guy said no. Then we saw a white lady coming out, and I'm like, ah, but I thought they, they said it's not allowed. They say it's closed. It's closed. Then we went to the white lady, and then we asked, her, how did you get in there? It's like, oh, just go. I mean, we had to use another gate. We got there, the guy is like, no. I'm like, but this white lady said, they didn't pay anything, they just used that place. So, you know what? As Africans, we know how we do it. We saw people dashing, and then we also decided that, you know what? Just dash. Just dash because we wanted to see the river. It's pretty sad how they treat fellow Africans whenever you travel within Africa. I've been saying this over and over again. I mean, I've been the guy who has always been positive, but if I tell you the stuff that I go through to bring one positive video, and one thing that I feel so like, I don't know how to explain, like when you upload a video, the yeah. comments, oh my God, I love my country. Love my country. Yeah. Oh my God, my country is amazing. Oh my God. My and then someone says, oh, you didn't go to this place. You, you didn't go to this place. <laughs> Like, I, like I'm trying to enter in the, in the computer, just slap that they, person. Do you do know what happened? They didn't allow us. It's not like we didn't go. go. They didn't allow us. Man. Next time. Just, just next imagine time. you come to a country after the plane ticket, after the visa fee, then you take a, you you hire a car, travel like two hours, three hours, just to go and film a place. Then you get there, then they say they won't allow. They won't allow you. Man, going back to the house. It can be heartbreaking, man. And uh, this is what we've been enduring. This is what we've been going through. And sometimes we don't like sharing this kind of stories. But since we are out here, no internet, we wanted to talk to you all. So I'm so glad we're able to speak out, um, share some of the things that we go through. And uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes I think we need to be real with you all on the things that we go through. I mean, people thought traveling is just glamorous, like how you we portray it on camera. No. But <laughs> a lot goes on, man. Whatever situation that you find yourself, try and get a positive thing out of it. That is why I'm telling Africans that Africa aren't perfect, but Africa is the place to be. So you all should stay positive about the continent because this is the land we love. This is the land that our ancestors gave us. And this is the land that you and I need to protect i feel like it's a blessing to be from africa man like i don't know and one thing that i have to tell you is that whenever i go anywhere in africa i don't feel like a foreigner i don't feel like a stranger because i feel like i'm home and that's what i'm telling you it's time for us to clear those borders do you know that the berlin conference in 1844 is all because of congo because the wicked King Leopold wanted to keep this territory for himself. But I felt like, why would you keep a country for yourself? But when I got in here, I realized that, damn, this guy was smart. Because the beauty that I'm seeing in Congo is way beyond. Congo is a blessed land and I believe that people from this place must start doing things right so that the people of the country will benefit what God has blessed them with. Welcome to Congo. Welcome to Kinshasa. Where I am is called Maluku. So I want to tell you that Bienvenue Maluku. <laughs> Bro, you really got a paradise on earth, man. Yeah, the Congo River, right? <laughs> the Congo River. Yeah. Together with Brazzaville, Brazzaville right there. Brazzaville, right there, the mountains of Brazzaville, the countryside. I, mean, yeah. I feel like it's a blessing, man, to yeah. be in a country yeah. and you see another country right in front of you. 
Yeah. When the capital, we see another capital. I mean, uh, yeah. that, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, that's coming Yo, you. <laughs> but you know what? I woke up so early this morning. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of nature. Yeah. And I feel like everything is blended in one place. Yeah, yeah. Like, I see mountains. I mm -hmm. see river. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm surrounded by nature. Yeah, which is yeah, yeah. Amazing, man. No, nature, like, it's yo, a part of Africa. The breath that you even breathe in here is, is on a different level, man. Oof. The air. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Yeah. Oh. Wow. You don't think Africa is the place to be? Yeah, Africa is the place to be. Believe it. We have the nature, we have the potential, and the opportunity is here. If, if you want to work hard, Africa, Africa is there for you. It will follow up. <laughs> but I mean, there's so many people that don't believe in Africa. Yeah, yeah. That's. You know, that's the, that's the media, and that's what we got you with it. You know, you out here spreading the positive message about Africa, you know, and that's what inspired me, you know, and staying in Africa is something I want to do. Uh, that's that's incredible, yeah. man. The way you say staying in Africa is something that you want to do, which yeah. means that you're not in Africa before. No, I lived in America. You yeah. lived in America? Yeah, I lived You're born in and raised in America? No, I was born in Kinshasa, okay. but I moved to America when I was at the age of six. Age of six. Yeah, age of six. So yeah. definitely you don't even know anyone in here. Because <laughs> at the age of six, definitely yeah. you can't remember. No. no, that guy was my childhood friend. No. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I had all my friends in America. In America. But, you know, my mother kept that Congolese in me. You know, my father calling me, my aunties calling me from back home. So I was always connected until I came back here after a 10 to 12 years, I came back here. Oh, okay. And I started, and I, and, and I fell in love again. I fell in love again with Africa. You like, real, no, you didn't fell in love, man. You were real connected. Oh, yeah, I reconnected. Connected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fisherman. Yeah, he's a fisherman. You, so you see fisherman, and it's a village here in Maluku, actually. Mm. And this is just a resort in the middle of a village. Ha in the middle of a village. In How did you guys discover this place, man? Are you the one who discovered this place? No, it was actually my father who discovered this place. Okay. It, was, it was about 10 years ago. He used to bring us here. He started with that house over there, oh, as you okay. can see. And uh, it, it started with that. And then small by small, he just keep, kept on building, kept on, kept on going, you know, got the pool going. And I witnessed that when I was a kid because he used to bring his family here mm. and, and enjoy his, his private time here. And he just recently passed away about oh. a yeah about a year ago. May he so rest in yeah. perfect peace. Yeah, but I'm a peace. I'm a peace now. I'm yeah. a peace. Is it because your dad passed away? That's why you came back to Africa. Yes. Or you were with him before he passed away? I was with him before he passed away. But the reason why I stayed in Africa was because he passed away. Because I had to stay here and and you know just honor him. You know, just that's that's my hope to honor him. And um, yeah, and so Maluku is the first spot, the, the first place I want to honor him with. So yeah. I mean, how long have you been in back in Congo? Congo? I've been back a full year now. Four years now. I've been now. living here. Yeah. I mean, you don't <laughs> want to go back? No, no, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. Why? I found a home here. <laughs> Why? It seems I'm enjoying your time in here. I am. I, 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 there's some stuff that I'm doing here that I never thought I would do in America. You know? Like they, what? You know, it's just. For instance, I got a, I'm exploring the, the river right here with the cage. I got, it's not something I would think about doing in America, you know? Like, I, I, I don't know, but I wouldn't be doing that in America. Or being in a resort like this and helping the, the employees out, the people from this village out. And um, so to me, I feel like I can help way more people here than I can help in America. But that, that's just me. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of mangoes, and I believe that someday when I build my mansion, the only fruit that I'm gonna plant is mango. Because I love mangoes, but I don't like mangoes when they sell it on the street. I don't like the mango juice that they sell on the street. I love mangoes whilst they fall from the tree. I sit down with water, and then I enjoy it. I'm so proud of you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Because what you've done, yeah. so many young Africans are scared of doing. Yeah. Knowing the fact that they were born here, yeah. raised in Europe, America, but coming back here is a great challenge. Yeah. You've done it. Yeah, I've done it. And that's because I get enough positive, you know, news about what's happening in Africa. How? Um, you know, people like you, Wode. 
You know, like when I watch your 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 show, you talk to other positive young Africans. If more young Africans from America, Europe, get those type of information, I believe they will know what to do here. You, you started watching my videos in America and when you came to here, Congo? When I came to Congo, and I was actually about to give up on Africa. Really? Yes, and I started watching your, your shows, and I'm like, okay, I, I see people from Kenya, I see people from Somalia, I see all these young Africans who Appreciate are, who are, advancing and not thinking negative about their country and staying positive so i was like hey i can do it too and that's inspirational yes <laughs> yes i i feel so touched yeah and yeah <laughs> i mean stories like this yeah things like this drives me to do more of what i do because yeah. i am saying that africa belongs to africans exactly africa belongs to young africans yeah. you know so it's yeah. time for us to start doing stuff now and i'm so glad yeah. that one or two videos that I've been doing, I've been able to impact your life, which is amazing. You inspire but, people you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he, he reached out to me. He's like, oh, you know what? I've been watching your videos. Would you ever come to Congo? He didn't even know I was yeah. coming soon, man. And uh, here we are today. I had to. I had to. <laughs> it's a pleasure meeting you. Yes. But yes. Uh, let me know some of the challenges that you faced when you moved in here uh, that you nearly gave up. Yeah, on. yeah. So the first challenge is the culture shock. The culture shock, you know, you live in America for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. So the easy accessible stuff that you get in America, it's not going to be like that in Congo. You have to be outside in Congo. You have to be busy in Congo or Africa. You have to be busy because if you're not busy, nothing's going to happen for you here, you know? And in America, everything is there for you. The internet is there for you. The what, what is there? You can do work from home. In, uh, in America, here you have to be in the field. You it's a hustle. To, yeah, it's a hustle. You know, you can't, you know, you can't shy away from it. You can't cry about it. It's the hustle. You know, and that's the Africa is the wild wild west, as they call it in America back in the days. But it's the wild wild west right now. Yeah. And I'm part of the guy that don't want to miss that. You know, like they say, in America, in Europe, they have a written book. The book, it's a book. It's written. In Africa, the book is still empty. We need more African. We need more visionaries. We need more, you know, innovators to make Africa great and better than it already is. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> our innovators. Yeah. Our visionary people. Yeah, yeah. All of them. I mean, are in Europe, in America. Exactly. More of a brain drain. Yeah, exactly. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? Reconnect with Africa, like I did. Yes, you can still go back to Europe. You can still go back to America. But come back to Africa, make it your home, and grow stronger, and grow the people of Africa stronger, inspire the people in Africa. And that's, that's my message to the other people who are in America, or Europe, even Asia. Hey, come back to Africa, reconnect with Africa, come work for the people. You got a very beautiful place, man. Yeah. And uh, I'm so glad that you've been able to take the mantle from your dad. Yeah. And um, yeah, is it like open to the public or is it still a uh, private property? It's still private for the moment because we're doing some renovation. Oh, okay. But we should be open by January. Yeah. By January. Yeah, by January. So um, yeah. if you are living in Congo or mm. if you ever visit Congo, yeah. um, you need to come to Maluku. Yeah. That's, the resort has a name because I don't see any name. Yeah, for this is the Maluku Resort. Okay. That's what we're going to call it today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time you come, the name will be changed. But yeah. I was here last night. It's such a beautiful yeah. place. I yeah. love uh, being at peaceful places because yeah. I believe that this place is so peaceful. Yes. It's a place to connect with nature. Yes. I mean, you will love it, man. Yes. So, apart from the resort, yeah. you're telling me something. You're exploiting the river. Or something. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. River actually, I have. I'm starting fish farming here Whoa. in the Congo River. Whoa, which I haven't heard too many people doing it. I've been told I'm the first one doing it. And I started with my first cage a month ago, and um, it should be operational by next month. Uh, you guys will see the cage. Can, can we go and check yes, it out? Yes, yes, let's all right, check it let's out. go. Yes. <laughs> Is that a boat carrying people? Yes, it's a boat carrying people. And that's the hustle of Africa I'm talking about right here, man. These people will be 
in this boat for maybe a month or two. What? Going to another province in the central of Congo. And uh, everything happens in that boat. It's another world in that boat. You got people who sell stuff. You got women having kids. What? You got... You mean having kids like... Yes. They kids. give birth. Yeah, they give birth. Dangerous. It's very dangerous. But yes, you have... It's a different world in, the, in that boat. It's a, it's a world in that boat, you know? And these are people actually traveling to another province. Some of them, they're getting goods from there, bringing it back. Some of them are going there for new life. You don't know what it is. Everybody got a story, you know? And uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. This I, is saw, I saw one this morning, but I think it was going to Brazzaville. Yeah, yeah. But this yeah. is still in Congo because I still see the Congo flag on it. Yeah, this is going to Quater. It's a province called Equatel. Equatel. Yeah, it's it's going to the right, right One here. One to so two months to get to that front of the station. And yeah. I feel like the <laughs> boat is crawling, you know? Yeah. It's not moving, it's just crawling. Yeah. Jeez. It, 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 it's gonna take its time, man. No, I think it's <laughs> one of the sad stories of Congo. It really is, it and, really uh, is. Because yeah. I believe that the country got so much. Potential, yes. Potential, yeah. but I mean, the people in power are not utilizing the potential, no. the man. the Congolese deserve better. I, yes, yes, yes. yes. It deserves better. Africans deserve better. better. Exactly. I mean, yes. we need to have people that thinks about, like yep. people in power that thinks about their people. The people. So, so that so many people can come back home. Exactly. If Africans deserve better, it's not only Africans from here. It's also Africa from the diaspora. Exactly. They want to come back no. home, but the leaders don't make it any easier for them to come. come and and, and that is the sad part. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I would love to mm -hmm. sit down with African yeah. leaders, yeah. ask them that question, question. man. Exactly. What are you doing to enhance the development of the continent so that people can know that, yo, Africa belongs to us yes. and it's time for us to come back home. Yes. But they're not making it possible for people to come back home and we, we gotta make that we gotta so make sad. that happen. We gotta make that we gotta make that happen with it. And you're the perfect ambassador for that. Because you speak positiveness on Africa. Nobody can lie to the African when you talk positiveness about Africa. You know, when people see the positive, not the negative. But this yeah. comes to my next question, like yeah. why are Congolese so negative on the internet? Congo about their people. They, they, Congolese bash Congo all the time. Yes, Congolese are very negative because the country is now finally being stable, you know? But we need more positiveness if we want to advance. But they bash because, of course, the Congolese people deserve better. See, <laughs> I believe that Congolese people deserve better. Yeah. But who is that person who's going to make the change? Exactly. It depends on you, the one who is bashing. You gotta look yourself in the mirror. Exactly. I keep yeah. on telling Africans <laughs> yeah. that, yo, I'm not saying Africa is perfect. Yeah, yeah. Like traveling in Africa, exactly. doing businesses in Africa is yeah. a great struggle. Yeah. But someone has to make that step. That first step. You know, that inspiration. You know, like I said, when I was watching your show, mm. I was bashing. You know, I was, <laughs> I was like, hey, man, God. But when I watched your show, I was like, I just seen a different standpoint. Put the negative away. And let, and let me focus, focus on, on the positive, on what I can do. What the, and I had to, you know, take a deep inside look at myself and, and tell myself, like, no, I have to do better. I have to do better for myself, and that'll be better for the Congo, and, and, and that's the step we have to take. Oh, so this is it, eh? Yeah, this is it. This is my first cage. Um, uh, I'm trying to have more, but we, hey, a start is, is somewhere to go. But this is the, the, the first cage. I'm about to have uh, 22,000 baby fishes in there oh. in about a month. And we're going to see how it goes because it's still an experimental kind of work, you know? Well, what inspired you to do something like this, man? Uh, actually, you know, my granddad was mm -hmm. a fisherman. Okay. And um, I used to have a job at the office, but after the office kind of work, mm -hmm. I wanted to be more on the field, more in the nature, you know? <laughs> and uh, fish farming was something I wanted to do because I love the Congo River. It always been one of my, my favorite thing about Congo. So this is my first cage and, uh, that, that, that I've done. Wow. And um, first of many, so we're gonna have many more. So when you come back, you will see many more. Will you? <laughs> 
amazing, bro. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I want to say to you that don't give up on Africa. Yes. Keep doing what you do. Yes. And the world will know your story. Yeah. I believe that if you're watching this video and you've not liked it yet, do me a favor and like the video because I feel like this video is full of inspiration. What is that one thing that you really don't like about Congo? Uh, the one thing I don't like about Congo is definitely the corruption. And um, that's because when you're trying to do good, hmm. the corrupted people are going to tell you you're doing bad. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> They're going to tell you you're doing bad. And they try to put you in a corrupted mindset but you have to be strong and get out of that but it's not easy you know it's not easy there's temptation but it's definitely corruption that i don't like about congo that's that's what i wanted to give up on congo but i think we could be better than that you know it's definitely corruption and definitely there's one thing that you really really love about congo one thing i really really love about congo I hate it or love it it's definitely the people i love the people you know, it, it's an emotion, people, but the nature as well, with the people. So it's the resource of the country that I love about Congo. <laughs> if you had a chance to change one thing about your country, Congo, what would it be? If I had one thing to change about my country, Congo, I would want us to be more, we are united as a people, hmm. but more united as infrastructure, like roads. Like people from Kinshasa can, can take a road trip to Bukavu or Goma or Lumbashi or even Kasai, you know, even Equatel, all those provinces. And I wish I could take those road trips instead of just being on the plane mm -hmm. and, and going. I love, I'm, I'm a guy that loves road trips. In America, I took a lot of road trips. Just so. I, I, if one thing I could change is definitely the the roads infrastructure. Roads infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. We have so many young Africans mm -hmm. that were born in the diaspora. Yeah. That maybe your story or whatever you're gonna tell them might inspire them yeah. to follow your leads or follow your footsteps. Yeah. What would that message be? My message to them would be: figure out what you want to do in America or in Europe. Figure that out and put you a hundred in it and work in that field if you can. But don't forget about Africa. Don't forget about here. There's people looking up to you here. And don't just be one of the people over there. Be the person here. Be the, the, the main person that brings it here, you know? You will be a hero. You will be a trailblazer out here if you do that. So that will be my message. Like, follow what you're doing and then show us to the people in Africa here. Show us how you did it so the people can learn how you did it. That's all we can do. We, all we can do is learn. So just don't forget about Africa. That's what I would say. I want to say thank you so much for talking to yeah. me. I really appreciate your time. And I appreciate um, you. I will see you yeah. somewhere in <laughs> another country. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> all right, man. Yeah. Like, yo, this place is so pretty, man. Look yeah. at that. Like, you see, this is something that you never get anywhere in the world. Yeah. You're just right here. Traditional. He's fishing traditionally. <laughs> That's amazing, man. That's so pretty. Yeah. Bonsoir. Uh, bonjour. Bonjour. Oh, hey. Jeez, man. Jeez. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and be part of this awesome family. I'll see you in the next one. Aya Maya. Peace out. <laughs>